welcome back to the channel and if you're new here welcome i'm isabella your spiritual rebel friend and today i want to talk about what pisces sun rising north node moon any strong pisces placements can expect from september september is one of the most hectic months of 2024 frankly and i don't like to say any month is negative and i know you can hear my door shaking in the background because the wind comes through the roof and it shakes the door. I'll fix it in a second, but I don't like to say any month is necessarily negative. I don't like to say in my personal astrology interpretation that things are gonna be, you know, super chaotic or dangerous or be careful kind of thing, but it is intense. It's gonna be a bit chaotic. We have not only our eclipse season or eclipse portal opening in your sign Pisces, but we also have two major planets going retrograde. So I wanna go through and talk about in order what you can expect from this month and where in your life is going to be highlighted hopefully that fixed my door problem if not you're just going to hear the rattling in the background uh so pisces as far as my interpretation this month really does affect primarily your love life but not even simply just already existing relationships but your relationship with relationships so my interpretation of this month for you as a summary is you're going to experience a random setback in your career or a random backtracking where you feel like you can't have as much momentum or passion as you normally have in your career, especially if it's something to do with communications or writing. If you've been trying to publish something, publish a book for your career, get a speaking gig for your career, you're experiencing some delays with that. But as a result, this delay is making room and space for you to focus on your intimate relationships and love life. Pisces, if you're in a relationship, this could mean that you're basically starting the process of redating your current partner, where you guys are asking yourselves, why were we together in the first place and how we can make this or how can we make this a more intimate connection? If you're not dating anyone, maybe there's been a desire for you to get into a relationship for some time. Um, and maybe you're seeing the benefit of being in a relationship or maybe not, but now you're starting to experiment with the idea of what do I want the dating process to look like? And what do I want it to look like when I'm in an intimate, close relationship? Basically, you're now in the state of focusing on taking action and knowing and identifying what you want relationships and dating to look like from start to finish, from going on a first date with someone to uh, being close, being married even, being in a long-standing relationship. And so there's a few reasons for this. We have some planets transiting your fifth, seventh, and eighth house, and I'll break down all of what those are. But let's rewind and start from the beginning of what to expect starting at the beginning of the month, working towards the end of the month. So first and foremost, September really does start off with a lot of intensity for three major reasons. One, we have Pluto going retrograde back into Capricorn. It's final entry into Capricorn for good in this lifetime. Second, we have Uranus going retrograde in the sign of Taurus. And third, we have a new moon in Virgo that we really start to feel on August 29th. So before September even starts, we're feeling this energy. So first and foremost, Pluto in Capricorn. This is why I say that you may be experiencing some backtracks, so to say, in your career life. You may be feeling like you can't move things forward. I also just realized that I did that calculation wrong. Capricorn is not your 10th house Pisces. Capricorn is your 11th house, which is still somewhat your career oftentimes. But really what this means is that you're gonna be experiencing a backtracking with your big dreams, aspirations, and community. So this really actually does elaborate on the writing side of it that I said, because Uranus going retrograde in your third house, which is actually in fact your third house, puts a retraction on your everyday community and your writing. So two interpretations for this. You're starting off the month and either there's some sort of big dream you've had of publishing something, speaking at some event, um, anything to do with an expression, so to say, a global expression in some way, and you felt a lot of sense of purpose in this, either that feels like you're losing steam on it. There may be blockages coming up, contracts needing to be reviewed, and you can't move it forward. You can't 
get this ball rolling fast enough. So you're having a slowdown in this and you feel like, oh, I just want it to move forward and it's not moving forward. On the other interpretation, you may feel like you're withdrawing from your community or your community is no longer serving you in the sense that your neighbors to your friend group, all these connections that you see on your day-to-day -day life and hang out with those that you consider your community, you're falling away from them, so to say, which is so to say maybe you're taking some isolation or you're feeling like you're around them and they're not quite fulfilling. So there's two interpretations to this. Think about those two. Are you feeling either of those two starting in September? You can expect to feel those as you're starting the month. This is Pluto though that we're talking about and Uranus. So while Pluto does affect your 11th house and main retraction, simply put, and reflection in your community and big dreams, this also does indicate that you're doing trauma healing. Given that it is Pluto, Pluto is said to be death and rebirth. I like to think of Pluto as tra trauma healing. So with Pluto being in Capricorn retrograde, Globally, we're all focused on healing our wounds around authority. But for you specifically, Pisces, you may feel like there are authorities in your community who represent father figures, or there's too much disciplinary energy in your community, potentially. There's this rigidity that you feel like is no longer fulfilling your soul, and you're ready to release it and move on to the age of Aquarius, where you have a more lighthearted, intellectual, individualistic community. So you're healing these wounds during this time. This could also again do with your big dreams and aspirations. Do you have wounds around certain kinds of people that keep you from stepping into your dreams? It's possible that you're realizing these during these time. You're having healing moments where you're breaking what you believe around authority, around discipline. Maybe it's your idea of success too. Maybe you feel like, I don't necessarily need to be successful in this i'm realizing maybe i just want to get this book published and again i say writing publishings because uranus is in your third house taurus so uranus again similar to my interpretation of pluto it's uh, being in your third house means that you're reflecting on some form of writing you're reflecting on some form of speaking or communication or daily life given that the third house is the house of everyday people everyday places, everyday communication, reading, learning, writing, speaking. So something's happening there where you're reflecting. There's a slowdown, it feels like. But this is Uranus, the planet of innovative thinking. Oftentimes this interpretation is not given for Uranus. It's often said to just be unexpected chaos, which is true. Uranus bring is like a lightning bolt. It comes out of nowhere, strikes, causes a loud sound, very intense but it's innovative thinking as well. It's said to be the higher octave of Mercury. And given the fact that this higher octave of Mercury, the planet of communication, is in your third house of communication, I really do think this is a focus on your writing or publishing or speaking. Have you wanted a speaking gig? Have you wanted to write something? Maybe you're reflecting on that now. And you're specifically reflecting on Taurus themes with this. So maybe you think you have to make money with it. Maybe I really see for Pisces that there's something you've wanted to create either writing or get a speaking job. And let me know if this further interpretation I'm about to say is accurate for you, please, in the comments below, or if it's something else. But it, to me, I'm really feeling like this is something to do with your speaking. You've wanted to do either something in speaking or writing. And you're recently, as of September, you're going to be feeling like, why am I trying to make this a success? Why am I trying to make this financially successful either? Why am I trying to make this about, um, maybe you felt like you've gotten to a trap of thinking it needs to be, you need to get an editor, you need to get the recognition, you need to look successful, appear the part, you need to be perfect. And you're slowly starting to realize, maybe I just wanna do this for creativity. Maybe I just wanna do this for the sake of fun. Maybe I just wanna do this so I can be in my purpose because my purpose is not about how successful I am, it's about how I feel. It's about expressing who I am. That is my interpretation of how this month is starting off for Pisces. These realizations can be hitting you. And overall, while retrogrades can be annoying, they reset us into alignment. At the same time though, this is a new moon in Virgo we're having in your seventh house, which is an interesting dynamic. 
but new moons are new beginnings. So while you're having this reflection energy, you're setting new intentions for the month and specifically for your love life. So it's possible that with Uranus retrograde in Taurus, your daily communications could be at fault, so to say. So communication with a partner or with relationships could be a little faulty or fickle, or maybe you're feeling like your self-worth is a little off in this communication. You're being critical of yourself. Be patient, be calm. Um, but the new, moon, the new moon in Virgo is in your opposite house. And so that means you're setting new intentions about relationships. And this is where my interpretation comes in that these passions are on standby so that you can make room for relationships. This is your month to reset your relationships and get something great out of it. Also, when I say relationships, this includes your, rela your relationship with yourself, which I'll get to in a minute. But the new moon in Virgo is a time for you to start this process. Set the intention of what do I want a relationship to look like? If you're not wanting to get into a relationship, maybe it's a relationship with a friend or a business partner, which could be playing more into that career thing that I've been talking about with your writing and your publishing and your speaking and your purpose. But either way, you're setting new intentions with how you are with other people, being practical about it too. With Virgo being your seventh house, or at least this new moon being in your seventh house, there's an emphasis on being practical and clear and detail-oriented in your communication with your one-on-one -on -one relationships. So this is gonna set the tone for the rest of the month and basically serve as the backbone for how you act in the upcoming events that are going to influence your love life further. So then on the fourth of the month, oh, really quick, on the new moon on in Virgo peaks on September 2nd. So you'll feel this energy from 31st all the way through the 4th. And then on the 4th, we have Mars entering Cancer, which is your fifth house, the house of love, romance, and play. It is also creative passion. So during this time, Pisces, you're probably wanting to spend more time at home, be chill, and do something you're passionate about. But you're also wanting to have someone who can be homely with you. And you may be finding a sense of comfort or life enjoyment in a emotionally secure way through dating. You could also potentially be meeting a very emotionally stable person during this time or emotionally expressive. Someone could be coming to your life during this time or you may be feeling called to um, interact with people in dating in a way that is in alignment with your emotions, that feels good. Your call to dating has now begun. So when you set that intention for what you want a relationship to be, you're now finding this team to go, okay, this is something I want. This is at least right now. It doesn't need to be in the long run, but it sounds nice to just meet people right now. I know my door is loud. You can even see it rattling. Sorry, not sorry. I can't do anything about it. So that's on the fourth of the month. And then on the ninth of the month, Mercury re-enters Virgo, your seventh house. Pisces, look back to August 4th through the 15th. Was there anything going on in your love life then? Because it's very likely that someone who was an ex-lover, an old connection, could now be coming back into the picture as a love interest. Mercury went retrograde in Virgo in the time span that I've just mentioned in August, and it now, going direct, re-enters Virgo, your seventh house. So it's very likely that now you're going to see movement in your love life during that time. Uh, Mercury will enter Libra on the 26th. So it could really be anywhere in that window from the 9th to the 26th. But I feel like there's a strong, powerful energy in its direct initiation hitting the first degrees of Virgo. So look at it's, pay attention to if anyone's coming back into your life. Maybe you want to take initiative and reach out to someone during that time who you find interest in. Maybe just plan a date. After all, Mars is in your fifth house. So maybe now's the time to just plan a date without thinking about if they're going to you know, necessarily make it in the long run. Hold your intention, but maybe just act for the sake of play. And then on the 17th, we have the big one, the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. This is a, again, a partial full moon. I don't know if I already mentioned that in this video, but it is a partial full moon lunar eclipse. And so what that means is that we may not be seeing the whole picture of what this eclipse energy is trying to do for us, but we're seeing a sliver of it. That's not to say there won't be manifestations. It's just saying that 
why these things are happening may not be for the reason that you expect. Pisces on the full moon lunar eclipse. This is a initiation of the self and you can feel this energy starting from as soon as the new moon or sooner. Maybe you're already feeling this energy. Let me know in the comments below, but on the eclipse, this is a new initiation of the self. We haven't had an eclipse in Pisces, I believe since 2006. So you're having a huge identity renewal here. This is a full moon, a culmination. You may be deciding that you are gonna leave old versions of your, old versions of yourself in the past, you're becoming someone new and this could be triggered because of what's going on in your career so to say your purpose and your writings and your daily life and your community as well as what's happening in your relationships in your love life so your purpose life and your love life are starting to get you triggers so to say on who you want to be and while you're focused on you know meeting good people meeting new people getting out there and dating you're also going Okay, but how does this reflect me as a person? And this is a huge theme for the month. Like I said, this is all about relationships, it seems like, for you. This month, it seems to be all about relationships, but this includes your relationship with yourself. So as you're interacting with other people, you're going, how does this make me feel about myself? And on the full moon, lunar eclipse in Pisces, at 25 degrees of Pisces, on the 17th, you can expect to reach a decision on how you want to be in the world who you want to be in the world and who you want to be to yourself. So this is huge. I could end this video here and just say, just keep that in mind. Overall, your dating life is activated, your relationships are activated, and your sense of self is activated. Ask yourself who you want to be with yourself and who you want to be to others and what you want. And then on the 22nd, we have Libra season beginning right after the eclipse in Pisces. Libra season engages your eighth house which means that i wouldn't be surprised if over the from the ninth to here's what i see happening pisces starting on the fourth you're going to start dating you're going to go on a few dates with a few people and then around the ninth to the 17th you're going to meet someone who you're in t contact with in august so who were you in contact with in august maybe it's someone with very strong virgo traits or other um mutable traits is virgo mutable or is it fixed why am i forgetting this my brain i want to say it's fixed even though i'm pretty sure it's immutable i have to double check that really quick because i want to make sure this is correct um mutable yeah i know my stuff it's also maybe another mutable sign um and so you may have met someone back in august who has this energy and now you're going to go on a date with them again. And you're going to realize up from around the 9th to the 17th, so really only a seven-day window or eight-day window, that you really like this person. And by the time you get to the 22nd, you're going to decide that you guys want to try out a relationship together. Not necessarily putting a ring on it and saying, let's get married, but I want to make, let's try this. Let's try to make this work. Libra season is your eighth house, which is intimate relationships. Oftentimes can be just sexuality, you know, hookups, um, casual stuff. But in my view, the eighth house represents intimacy and vulnerability. And so when we have anything in our eighth house, this is a focus on vulnerable connections and vulnerable connections take faith and trust. So you're probably going to be entering a relationship around the 22nd Libra season that is going to invite you to be more trusting. And this could be in alignment with your new sense of self that you're stepping into. You're going, I want to be a more trusting person. I want to be this kind of person who basically, who lets people in, who enjoys their dating life to the fullest. Not that necessarily for the sake of codependency, but just to connect with other people. And then on the same day, Venus enters Scorpio in your ninth house. So. This is getting more energy back into that purpose we were talking about earlier. So you're entering a relationship basically from the first, well, really August 29th, all the way through to the 22nd, you're going to have a bit of a pause on your purpose and your career and your passions. And instead of kind of just focus on having fun in your dating life and cultivating that area of your life, your love life. And then once the 22nd hits, you're going to go, okay, seal the deal on someone. 
Now I'm going to go back to my dreams and aspirations. This could also mean that you have a desire to travel. This is also Scorpio energy. Scorpio is very similar to the eighth house. Scorpio built the eighth house, so to say. So you could be wanting to experience more vulnerability, more depth through travel. Not only are you diving deep with a partner, forming an intimate relationship with a partner, but you're also wanting to form depth with your life experience that itself. So you could be revisiting your writing projects, creative projects, purpose projects, or you could be maybe starting something else. Maybe you're traveling, maybe you're experiencing something new. You're putting yourself into the unknown. And then finally, on the 26th, we have Mercury entering Libra, which means you'll be having heightened communication with your partner if you're in a relationship or if you are starting a relationship or finding someone that you enjoy, you could be talking with them more. This is your eighth house, your intimate relationships. Share your heart, Pisces. Overall, this is a really beautiful month for your love life. I really do think that you have someone wonderful coming in who's going to be sharing their feelings with you anywhere between the 9th and the 26th um, or further. They may be sharing their feelings for you. They may be really appreciating this new sense of self that you're trying to step into. You may also just be appreciating that they support, so to say, or see you as the version of yourself you want to be and that invites you to become who you want to be. You may feel a little bit frustrated and confused with this energy that is stopping your community, your everyday life, your purpose, your writings, but just wait it out. Pisces. It's going to get better. And this is the last time Pluto will go retrograde here. So I invite you to reflect on what you're ready to release. Any big traumas or a familial, what is the word? Um, ancestral traumas, um, traumas and wounds and beliefs that were passed down. Generational trauma, that's the word. Generational beliefs that you have been passed down onto you. What do you want to let go of? This is now a great time to do that. And what are your beliefs around success? In the end, as far as like this disturbing energy, so to say, that may be f making you have to pause on a passion or purpose project, ask yourself, what does success mean to me? What does abundance mean to me? What do I value? And what do I want to release? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it, Pisces. Let me know in the comments below if this is accurate. Let me know if this resonates. Let me know what I missed about this interpretation that you are feeling for the upcoming month. And if you want to learn more on how to do that for yourself, if you want to give yourself your own astrological interpretations, I invite you to check out my Master Astrologer Astrology course in the link in the description below where I teach you everything you need to know about astrology to become your own astrologer or an astrologer for other people. You learn the signs, the houses, the planets, transiting versus natal, how to read birth charts, and so much more. Check it out in the link in the description below. And if you want to get 50% off, comment the words Master Astrologer in all caps, and I will send you the info on how to get 50% off the course. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Sincerely hope you enjoyed. Be sure to book a reading if you want to learn more about how this month is going to affect you, whether you have a Pisces sun, moon, rising, or something completely different. Once again, my name is Isabel, and from my heart to yours, namaste. Oh, 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 oh,